Well, hello everyone and welcome to our second webinar for 2017. I'm Alkis and I'm a senior associate for the capacity building team at CAP+. Plus. For all of you that participated in our previous webinar, I want to welcome you back. And to all of you that are attending for the first time, thank you for joining us and we hope you will attend more webinars throughout the years. If you're interested in our upcoming webinars, we have two webinars in March and April that can be found in our website. So please, if you can go ahead, look at these webinars and if you're interested, you can enroll from now. We will have more upcoming webinars throughout the year and we always post them in our website. So many of you know CAP Plus and have worked with us before, uh, but to all of you who are here for the first time, I really want to tell you more about CAP Plus. So CAP Plus is an organization that enables financial institutions in emerging markets to better serve small and growing businesses. For more than 10 years, we have been delivering mutual reinforcing interventions that has helped financial institutions increase their effectiveness, scale and profitability for their services to the SME sector. Working with CAP Plus means delivering results and strengthening your institutions. As we are almost ready to start our webinar for today on business analytics for small business banking, we are very delighted to have here Mr. Jerry Montero, our senior advisor, that will be our speaker for the day. So Mr. Montero is a technology-oriented technology banker with over 40 years of experience and strong strategic business and credit expertise with well-developed negotiation and management skills. He has led and advised startups and turnaround projects in many banks and non-financial institutions in different countries and regions like Sub-Saharan Africa, MENA region and South Asia. He is skilled in diagnostics, marketing and business development, SME, microfinance and consumer lending, risk and compliance management and many other areas. So I just want to hand it over to Jerry and we want to start this webinar. Jerry, please. Thank you, Alki, for moderating this webinar and for the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining CAP Plus's webinar on an introduction to analytics for small business banking. In today's agenda, I will first get some jargon out of the way, then address briefly as to why we need business intelligence and business analytics. Of course, the big question then is what is the best practices we should follow which are very important for collecting and analyzing data. Also the challenges we face and an effective transformational strategy that should be followed. We will closely look thereafter at how to manage the diversity of data at hand. Finally, before addressing an approach to reports and templates, we'll review some analytic data items and areas that can be included in the dashboards and reports. The slides in this pack have a lot of information and therefore at times the font may be a bit small, 14 point, so may not translate to your screen very clearly. We thought, however, it was better to provide this information as also to send you a copy of the presentation uh, so that you can review the slides at your leisure later. Let's look first at some jargon. We hear often the words business analytics and business intelligence. The latter is used extensively by many financial institutions when they want MIS and varied reporting from their co-banking systems. We hear it especially from those FIs when they use Temenos. But what do these words actually mean in the broader context? Business intelligence essentially looks backwards at historic data and with adequate analytics to back it up, provides dashboards and reports to manage and facilitate database decision making to grow the business. I.e. it focuses on past performance and guides business planning. Business analytics, on the other hand, has grown more rapidly over recent times and different people have different concepts of what it stands for. 
you see here SAP's version, which is an all-encompassing umbrella definition, and SAS, which emphasizes statistical and predictive anal analytics. These analytics are the core to growth in the area, and the algorithms and predictive tools used by fintechs is what it is all about. Often this is called advanced analytics using sophisticated modeling techniques to predict future events or discover patterns which cannot be detected otherwise and to provide innovative business opportunities. Most people still confuse between BI and BA and as one leading practitioner mentioned, everybody has an opinion but nobody knows and for the present you shouldn't care. This is true for the present for most FIs yet to develop their BI capabilities. But in the longer term, you must care and utilize analytics more as that is the only way to survive and grow. For the present in this webinar, let's use the terms collectively as a way to move forward to data-driven decision making. We will talk later a little more on how the data has to be manipulated, aggregated, analyzed and presented for effective utilization. However, proper visualization is a key here. The other word that we hear uh, a lot today is big data. Big data is a term that describes very large volumes of data, both structured and unstructured that inundates a large business on a day-to-day -day basis. Traditionally, it is characterized by the three Vs, volume, velocity, and variety. Increasingly, people talk additionally about variability and complexity. We have provided definitions for you in this slide. When we say big data, we do really mean colossal quantities which are increasing exponentially especially with the growth of social media, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. Most of us extending SME banking in emerging markets do not have the same scale of big data, but the quantity is still very large and increasing with the spread of delivery channels. It, however, does have characteristics of the four Vs and the C above. Without proper BI and analytics, we are not going to be able to effectively utilize this data to manage and grow our financial institutions. So whatever be the data levels we have at our disposal, it is what we do with the data that matters. The data we have or obtain from internal and external sources, properly aggregated and analyzed, provide pointers and answers for increasing revenue, new product development, cutting costs, turnaround times, and smart decision making. As the level of data and sophistication of analytics we use increases, we can detect and take actions in real time to determine root causes of failures, evaluate risk portfolios, detect frauds, etc. Let's address later in the webinar, some analytic data items and areas that can be reported on which can provide us benefits from BI and analytics. Let's now look at the benefits of BI and analytics and why it is imperative that we go down this pathway. As I mentioned earlier, the volume of available data has grown exponentially. Throughout history, ideas have sprung from human ingenuity and creativity, but now data and algorithms can support, enhance, or even replace human ingenuity in some instances. BI, data, and analytics are thus changing the dynamics of competition, and an ever-increasing number of fintechs are using these techniques to develop disruptive models which have started cutting into the FI marketplace. Even Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase, has commented on this in his April 2015 annual letter to shareholders. 
Diamond warns of the encroachment of well-funded Silicon Valley and, of course, rest of the world startups offering various alternatives to traditional banking, effectively using big data to enhance credit underwriting and reducing the pain points in that they can make loans to in minutes, which might take banks weeks. Diamond also talks about comp competitors and payments, the use of Bitcoin networks, aged ACH systems, etc. <clears throat> so if we think that global fintechs are not yet a possible competitor to SME banks in emerging markets, we need to think again. These new digital plays have an enormous advantage and to keep up with them, existing FIs need to dynamically use their data and analytics to improve their core operations. This may involve identifying new opportunities for equipping staff to meet business targets and using analytic insights to better manage risk or meet regulatory demands. The ability to track sales, margins, and operational performance should improve uh, data-driven uh, decisions. And as FI's internal analytic capability improves, it should be possible to identify and predict trends that can help meaningful strategic plays in leveraging geographies, products, demographics, and customer behavior. Data and analytics also help to structure teams, resources, and workflows. High-performing teams can be many times more productive than low-performing teams. So understanding this variance and how to build more effective collaboration is a huge opportunity for FIs. The road to growth and increasing profitability lies in better and faster decision making by using analytics to align all the data within the bank, making sure, of course, that it is accurate, timely, in context, and available to all who need it. This is important. Because as BI and analytics grow, they will help in cutting out hierarchical layers in the institution and provide more staff the ability to take decisions and be transparently accountable. How FIs use their marketing dollars can also change with more analytic feedback available from historic spends and today's changing marketplace. The ability to focus on marketing return on investment and integrating available options and attribution modeling, i.e. identifying web-based sets of user actions, will enable a higher success rate to be obtained from the creativity of your ideas. With FIs lagging behind in BIBA, we seem to miss the fullest digital needs of SMEs in today's world. They now move to non-players as a result. Have a look at the time of customizable as a type of customizable dashboard that branch banking and trust company in the US offers their SME customers. This is a very well focused dashboard that they provide online with valuable information. It can also be customized by the SME customer, which enhances their overall customer experience. BIBA also supports stress testing and scenario analysis. With risk data housed in a unified repository, it is much easier to analyze market and credit risks, ALM and liquidity risks. Aggregating risk across all portfolios provides a complete risk picture and will help any FI meet the challenges of Basel II and III and stress test. Let's try out now a quick poll. Thank you, Jerry. So we'll have our first poll for the day. You will see this screen with a question and the Four, five different choices on your screens. Please select one of the choices 
The question is, what do you think is the most important area where data analytics and dashboards and BI custom reporting will help your institution? We'll keep the polls open for like 20 seconds and then we'll close the polls and discuss what the results are. So 20 seconds, please click on one of the options. Which one do you think is the most important? And then we'll discuss the results that all of you are uh, clicking now. So results are coming in. So we have 60% of you said risk management, 40% obtaining increased business, and the other choices, no one selected them. Jerry, can you talk a bit more about these poll results? Um, yeah, this is very interesting um, in the sense that it's, it's very clear cut that risk management and increased business is the, is the focus. I would have hoped also that building high powered teams would get some attention because at the end of the day, that is where the uh, maximum utilization can, can come in uh, from using analytics. And, and as a result of that, you can both control risk management as well as increase business. Uh, let's move uh, to um, uh, move on now to what are the best practices to collect and analyze data. The answer, simply put, is to develop a data management plan. Uh, we have listed here a few prerequisite components for the plan. While I do not propose to go into individual detail, which will be available in the presentation we send you, some key items are as follows. Critical data inventory consists of those data elements and their business definitions that the business deems important for decision making and compliance. Data integration covers the processes and tools for acquisition, composition, and enrichment of data from different sources into a single unified store of view. Data profiling is the examination of data to collect statistics and characteristics about the structure of the available data. Data quality obviously means whether the data is fit for intended use. Metadata is information about the data itself. Master data or master file is a single authoritative an agreed upon source of data that is critical for business operations. Reference data is used to classify or categorize data. And data pri uh, privacy includes processes, algorithms, and technology platforms to ensure full compliance with information privacy and protection laws and regulations. Let's have another poll at this stage, Alki. Thank you, Jerry. So we want your opinion on what do you consider the major challenge for BI and analytic solution implementation? So we have five options, so please click one of them. Ability, availability of budgets, business technical analyst staff, cleaning present database, mindset changes required for management and other staff, or institutional process for engineering. So we're keeping the polls open again for 20 seconds, and then we'll discuss the results of your opinions and what do you consider the ma major challenges for your BI and analytic solution implementation at your organization. Um, the polls are closed now, and we have some mixed replies here with um, the majority, more than 50 50% of you saying that business, technical, analyst, staff available and expertise is one of the major challenges. And then the second one is the mindset change for managers and other staff. And the other options have like 10% budgets and clear cleaning database. So Jerry, it seems that the one of the major challenges that everyone thinks is business and technical analyst staff available and expertise. Uh, would you 
what would you say to that? Thank you. Thank you, Alki. I think that is that is very, very interesting. Um, and, and I really uh, uh, would have anticipated exactly uh, the number one uh, choice of our uh, attendees. Let me talk about that uh, in a second. And, and let me uh, talk uh, a little bit about my, uh, a couple of other items first. One is about cleaning the present database. I think that is very important also. You cannot, it takes a long time, but there are ways to make it more efficient. And not doing this efficiently can cause major problems in the future. As we have seen with several FIs where they did not complete this exercise before even implementing their uh, co-banking systems. Change management is a very important uh, item, as has been acknowledged by the attendees. In addition to promising better and more profitable insight into customers, channels, and risk, big data and analytics are going to change the way banks operate internally by breaking down institutional boundaries, changing, as I said, hierarchical structures, and forcing people out of their proverbial comfort zones. And, and therefore, while the potential rewards are worth a lot, there has got to be a proper way of managing, managing this change. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that um, uh, the budgets were not a very major concern because implementing BI and BA in an effective manner is going to need investments, time to complete implementation, and proper management to continue day-to-day -day business while implementing the project. Availability of budgets and competing investment pro proposals are always going to crop up. But I think we will find that what is happening in the world today, with, with all that, it is not a bus that one wants to manage. So talking about staffing, it really takes BI to the next level. Although technology tools are an essential part of gathering, managing, and analyzing data, they are nearly useless to an FI if it does not have staff in place with the skills and knowledge to effectively use them. Buying software to perform analytics without having the right talent in place is like putting the cart before the horse. The type of staffing talent needed to effectively leverage big data can be broken down into three categories. Data scientists, data analysts, business analysts. In addition to being data savvy, business analysts need to have deep institutional knowledge and industry of functional expertise. This enables them to ask the data science team the right questions and to derive the right insights from their findings. These business analysts are going to be very, very difficult to source and retain. So you should be actively looking for them internally and developing them now. You've got to have data housed and it has to work efficiently. It has to be clean and people have to have access to it. But there's also a whole lot a set of softer skills that become quite important around making use of that data, which include critical thinking and problem-solving capabilities. And if I can still instill and maintain its workforce, the types of skills and knowledge needed to leverage data by delivering ongoing training. In fact, research from the Accenture SAS Analytics Group indicates at this point, companies are leaning towards training existing employees rather than hiring new ones. Although hiring new employees can be very expensive, saving money is not the only advantage to training current staff. When you train existing employees, you're getting them on board with the idea that you're going to create an analytical based or fact-based decision culture. And finally, Competition for analytical resources and talent is also already stiff across industries in the U.S. and increasing worldwide. And therefore, you need to be creative in recruiting technical staff. 
they do not necessarily have to be from banking, but could be sourced from other disciplines and experiences. So let's also look at a steps that we need to take in effecting a transformation of your BIBA strategy. Even if you have business intelligence in place, I think it would be worthwhile to reevaluate what you have and where you wish to go. I'd like to highlight a few of these steps. The first step should be asking yourself some fundamental questions to shape your strategic vision. What will data and analytics be used for? How will the insights drive value? How will the value be measured? Many FIs also struggle with switching from legacy data systems to a more nimble and flexible architecture to store and harness data. They may need to digitize their operations more fully in order to capture the more data they get from their customer interactions through their varied and increasing delivery channels and customers. Yes, including SME customer social media interaction. Therefore, identifying KPIs to measure progress is very important. Getting support from various stakeholders is a given. Some may need education on the benefits of this initiative. As we said earlier, across the board, companies find it difficult to get the right staffing talent in place, very big hurdle. And therefore, once again, I would suggest put talent in place before technology. And I'm happy that people agree with this. Once we know what we want to strategically achieve, how much we wish to invest, the pace at which we want to go, are confident of the staffing that we are putting in place, we should be ready to start evaluating potential solutions. There are various options that are available, including packaged or custom solutions, either from external providers or developed in-house, if the expertise is here. There are also a vast number of possible software in the market. Um, I won't go to a slide on that though I will include in the presentation which we circulate uh, the top five of the 87 BI tool solutions which are around. As you go forward, institutions need to build the capabilities of executives and mid-level uh, managers to understand how to use data-driven insights and to begin to rely on them as the basis for uh, making decisions. And as we also mentioned earlier, proactively managing the change process is another major challenge. And senior managers and HR departments will need to take a proactive role. And therefore, as, as you all have also acknowledged, change management is so very important. Let's go to one more poll now to check what your preferences are in how one must go about implementing a BIBA. Thank you, Jerry. So please select one of the five options that you see in your screens. What type of business intelligence analytics solution do you presently have? If you have a custom solution developed by external, in-house, package solution on premises, package solution external provider or on demand. Please, I just want to remind you, if you also don't have a BI or uh, analytic solution, please, if you can write it to us in the question or chat box that you don't currently have one in place. As the replies are coming in for this quick poll, uh, we're going to share with you the results very quickly. So please let us know if you don't have one, uh, so we also know that percentage. So the majority of you, 50%, said custom solution developed in-house. And then we have 25% saying custom solution developed by external provider. And very few saying uh, package solution on-premises and hosted by external provider. So Jerry, uh, I'll leave it to you from now. I think that's a very, I think that's a very excellent response. Uh, it, it, indicates to me that people take BI and uh, analytics extremely um, seriously 
and would like to have control over the solution. Uh, developing in-house is of course a risk unless you have the uh, inbuilt expertise and many financial institutions already are stretched on their technical resources um, even to the extent of their co-banking system and therefore a custom solution developed by an external provider may be a possible alternative but obviously these are the two areas uh, that are interesting to note. So let's uh, uh, look forward and, and go uh, to see another important issue of managing the diverse data that is available in the institution. Many FIs have multiple core systems and several ad hoc satellite systems added over time, resulting in discrete islands of data, including multiple database of databases of their customers and other information. I could give you pretty grotesque stories about this if at some other time. Several of these systems are robust, but rigid to the extent that they limit flexibility for many reasons and have standardized outputs irrespective of user needs. They also all need manual interventions for reporting. So what is needed is to move to a single version of the data, maintain a robust system of course, but ensure it's still flexible and importantly scalable. Finally, minimal manual intervention should be required. Those should, these should be customizable when needed under sector conditions. The solution is to move to a single analytic data store, having one version of live data to be the central stack of all reporting and analysis needs. To get to this, data must be reconciled across all systems. <clears throat> it should have a single output layer which leaves the core system untouched. Output should be robust, but customizable to user profile requirements. Overall, there should be very good administrator control with different privilege levels and reports tailor-made for users by level at defined frequencies with the option of drill downs where required. More details of the chain scenario that is required are listed here. I won't spend time on this slide, but leave you to digest it at your leisure when we send you a copy of the presentation. In the next few slides, I have a list of several data items and areas that can be reported upon as required with predefined parameters and dashboards and reports. These are definitely in no way exhaustive and many other important items can be tracked on. In the interest of time, I will also not go through these in detail, but they will be available to you in the presentation that will be circulated. These cover risk management as shown here, improving operational efficiencies and boosting profit, SME customer profitability and segmentation, financial performance management, and improving automated regulatory reporting, which in today's environment is getting more and more complex and important. And onerous also, if I may add, especially in the US context, where large fines are routine from day to day. In this section, we have put together several templates with a collection of charts and graphs which would assist in you in developing user dashboards and reports, which identify key insights that clearly communicate KPIs and metrics to targeted users. But first, one bit of caution. As mentioned here, it is necessary that proper limit structures be in place in your core banking system to maximize its relevancy to reporting. Shown in the slide is only a very limited structure, and in practice, it can be quite complex. But we have found in many cases, this limit structure is not in place, and where it exists at FIs, there are even inaccuracies. Important items that can be incorporated when putting together a 360-degree information mapping of a customer is a list of incomplete documentation also suggestions of products with pricing 
that can be cross-sold to SME customers? If the latter can include pre-approved loans based on data that the institution already has and analyzed, so much the better. Of course, while I've put in a, quite a few items into this slide, the dashboards should not be as densely packed as some of these templates. These are just meant to be a collection to stimulate your own thinking of what items are relevant to your institution. Apart from relevancy to users, the dashboards and reports should be intuitive for use and where required have the ability to drill down to the level where actions can be taken. Customer performance summaries uh, can be done in various ways. It depends on where you wish to concentrate your efforts. Also, very detailed customer profiles can be put together to enable annual or periodic SME customer facility reviews. The data and visualization that can be added and can be substituted in various ways to provide, to improve visibility and provide action steps to relevant staff. On deposit mobilization while reviewing and targeting your deposit efforts, there are various possible data items can, that can be tracked here, both in value and numbers. And here are some further samples for your collection activities, recovery, as well as for credit card business. I hope the webinar has been interesting and given all of you some food for thought. Hopefully you all will look at the uh, PowerPoint presentations uh, or that the uh, probably the Acrobat presentation that we send you uh, and, and you know look at them at your leisure and see what else you can draw from it. Before we move to a Q&A session, let us have one last poll. Thank you, Jerry. So the last poll for today, we want to see how urgent do you consider BI an analytic solution for your institution? Immediate, one to six months, short term, second half of 2017, medium term, more in 2018, not for the moment, so 2019 more, and you can live without the BI and analytics. So please uh, select one of these choices so we have a better understanding of where all our attendees today stand on BI and analytic solutions for their institution. So we'll keep the polls a bit open for another 15, 20 seconds, and then we'll share the results. So we're getting the results now. So most, okay, so we have 53% of you say that they are urgently considering BI and analytics solution. And then 32% short term consideration, second half of 2017. We have very small percentage of 11% that they are thinking about it in the medium term. So Jerry, this tells us a lot about the pressing need for BI and analytic solutions from our attendees today. I think that is, I think that is very correct and I'm very encouraged. Uh, I know that in our audience we have um, a few FinTech members also. Um, I don't know whether they would be happy but I'm happy that financial institutions in emerging markets are going to take up the gauntlet, build on their business intelligence and analytics, and just not cave in to the new era digital plays. Um, so all, all the best in the efforts to implement uh, business intelligence and analytics as quickly as possible, build hyper teams, and, and take this whole initiative forward. Um, Alki, let's move on to a Q&A session and I will leave you to uh, moderate the session. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you for your presentation. It's been really amazing to have you here today. And we are going to start our Q&A session. Uh, this session is going to be 
around 15 to 20 minutes. We welcome all your questions. Please, if you can write them down, and we're going to take them one by one. I just want a quick reminder that if we don't have time to go over all your questions, we are going to answer them in our LinkedIn profile of Keplus. So just to make sure that every single question is going to be answered, if we don't have time to answer them today, we are going to post the replies to them on our LinkedIn profile. So we are welcome any question that you might have. Jerry will take them and will give you more insights. So please, if you can, type in your questions, and we are more than happy to start our Q&A. If anyone wants to just talk to us and share their insights or any challenges that might have faced in their institutions with uh, analytics, or if you just have something to share with Jerry, please also let us know, and we can unmute you and let you talk to us and to Jerry. So we are waiting for your questions. And if anyone has something to add or to ask Jerry, please write them down into our question box. Jerry? Yes. Do you have anything to share about what is a good step when if they are thinking to start the business analytics solution in the upcoming, like in short term? What is the first step that this institution should take? As I mentioned um, uh, sometime earlier in the webinar, Cleaning data is extremely important. So that is one very, very important uh, area. The second area, as, as also the members um, identified, was staffing talent, both on the technical side as well as the business analyst, and analyst side. If you look at the uh, cleaning area, uh, over a period of time, uh, data and or information which is which has been captured has been pretty poor in most of the FIs or many I shouldn't say most many of the FIs that I have interacted with over the last 10 to 15 years and the reasons are in some cases uh, simple uh, people have not gone into enough detail when they implemented their co-banking system the, the data items that they put in place were not good. Uh, when they looked at classification of advances, there were either very few items, just what the central banks wanted in their reports, or in some cases, 80 to 90 uh, classify, uh, classifications. And in the latter case, most of the front office staff would just put others. So they just lost all the data that they had. Mm -hmm. Some of them were not able to reconcile and therefore there were multiple areas of uh, data and information and if this is not taken forward then there's a problem and as the old sage goes garbage in garbage out. So cleaning data is very important, it takes a long time, needs to be done. The Thank second you, area we concentrated and we spoke about was yeah. business analysts. Again, and going back to the time financial institutions implemented their co-banking systems, many of them uh, relied on the technical staff to do the implementations. The coordinators were also technical staff, what should have been analyst staff, those who know banking, they know the processes, they know what customers require, and are able to be the bridge between the technical expertise and what is required to manage the business and to give a full customer experience. When you go to business intelligence and analytics and take it to a different level, this type of bridge is extremely important and business analysts are extremely important. 
I don't have the figures at the top of my mind, but I saw a report a few weeks ago when they estimated and that in the US in the next 10 years the number of business analysts required would be between 2 to 4 million and the number of people that are graduating in the STEMS area uh, is around 20 million and therefore that requirement is extremely high. The figures I'm generalizing I, as I said they may not be specific but they are really uh, surprisingly high. I think there are a few other questions there. Uh, yes, we uh, have received a lot of questions. So I was just going to say let's try to keep the answers short and so we can answer as much questions as we can. But there is a pressing question like that we received a couple of times. If you can recommend the best BI systems out there or what are the top BI applications or software available? Um, I, I would not want to recommend a particular software because there are so many softwares as I said there are 87 softwares uh, that I tracked recently. Um, th this decision has to be taken by individuals but let me um, show you the screen that I did not show you earlier and these are the top five out of the 87 business intelligence tools that IT Central Station shows. In fact, if you go to their website, you see all the 87 and they have a, a bar uh, showing ranking. Tableau comes very high. Uh, ClickView, Oracle OBE, uh, Microsoft Business Intelligence and IBM Cognos are the five top ones. Mm -hmm. um, but in the, you know, at the end of the day, it must be what works for you, what is the budget you want to uh, incur and what you can't, unless you have very good expertise in-house, I would not recommend doing it yourself and if you use an external partner, it depends on the region what external partners are available and what is the type of software that they, uh, that they have. Thank you, Jerry. So we have another question that is asking what is the most important thing about the data model structure? Any advice you can give on that? I think the uh, those three four slides that I showed on the data model um, comes out with one very clear goal. There has got to be one single uniform uh, data stack. Uh, no multiple databases. Uh, so there's got to be one stack and there's got to be a separate reporting layer which can draw from that so all the reports don't go to the original data but goes to the uh, reporting layer in between. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and getting to that I think is crucial. Okay, thank you Jerry. We have some other questions coming in. Uh, one of them is asking if can like analytic software be used in the African region? Oh, most definitely. I think huh? I think Africa is you know I mean Africa is is growing. Fifty four countries, more than a billion people. Uh, technology is booming in many areas. Uh, when Jamie Dimon spoke about uh, fintechs or, or talent and startups coming from Silicon Valley. If you see Africa, it is blossoming in various areas. Uh, so I, 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 I have a great uh, hope and, and uh, to see where uh, business intelligence and analytics is going to go and how Africa you know, is going to be the forefront of a lot of things in this area in the years to come. Uh, I think it is uh, there's a great opportunity and uh, we have quite a few participants from um, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa on this webinar today and I can see the interest in the subject um, and I think definitely uh, analytic software will be used very soon and in a big way. Great. Um, we have a couple of more questions, so we'll time we'll try to squeeze maybe two more 
in the time that we have remaining, um, one key question that just came in is what key aspects should an FI look when assessing the different uh, BIs available? There are so many softwares in the market and solutions, so how can an FI assess the different options that are there? Very interesting question. Um, um, very interesting and of course it depends on individual institutions, it also depends on the area in which the institution is, uh, is located. Um, you know the best software that you choose may not work for you if there is no provider to give you support either to install it in the first place properly and then give you maintenance support in the time going forward. Uh, therefore uh, you've got to look at software suppliers and uh, providers in your region. Uh, number two is before you do anything, as I said, you need to have a strategic vision of what you want to achieve. And in that process, and when you develop the KPIs to manage that, in between there, you've got to prepare a proper spec table. Um, a very, very detailed spec of what you want and then you can evaluate the softwares that you're looking at from providers in the region uh, which are going to meet these specs and how much it would cost to modify if there are certain important specs that you want which are not being met. And at the end of it, of course, is the total budget. Softwares come and go, uh, budgets are, uh, can be quite high but they are variable uh, and therefore a budget that suits you. But on this I would caution you, don't just go to the, the most inexpensive software because you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we will take another question uh, as we are running out of time for today. So we received another question about what is your opinion is it best to have a built in-house software or getting a ready packaged system? Number one I said was if you build an in-house software you better have very good in-house expertise. If you are a, a smaller medium or a medium sized bank in the, uh, in the context of your uh, business uh, you may not have that amount of technical or business analyst experience in-house, so building it yourself you should have some degree of caution. On the other extreme, a package software is going to have, may not meet all the specs that you want to achieve. Somewhere in between is to customize a software through an external provider. So you have a whole spectrum that you can choose from it depends what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Jerry. Thank you for uh, answering all these questions that we received today from our attendees to the webinar. And I want to thank everyone that participated in this webinar and also interacted with us through their questions. Uh, if you have any more questions, please write them down and we can get back to them. And I will give you the floor, Jerry, just to wrap up this webinar. Okay. A bit of information before we end it, that CapPlus is always available as usual to be a partner to provide capacity building to your institution, to advise on and develop your overall BI and analytic workspace initiative. Thank you very much uh, for being such a good audience and have a very good day. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, everyone, and hope to see you again in our next webinars.